Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker. I'm Doug and Seeker is not here. She's out at the Tulsa Port of Catoosa. We had a fantastic party last night uh, and I got a public service announcement to start this off. I'm going to show you uh, a tour of the boat as she sits out at the port and photos from the party last night. But special announcement is somebody walked off with one of our gift crates with all this stuff in it and it wasn't your crate. That's cool. Keep everything in it. But there's a set of keys in the crate, okay? If you pick those up and return them to the security gate at the Tulsa Port of Catoosa or write me at yml.com. Let me know where you can leave them, hotel room or whatever. That's cool. We'll pick them up and give them back to the owner. He'd like to drive back to Colorado today. So thank you for that. Here's the video. Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker, the boat the internet built from scratch right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. She is a 74 foot long, 60 ton, three masted, twin keeled, Chinese junk rigged motor sailor. Yeah, it's a mouthful. One of the things I love about Seeker is the artistic details that she has in her. We tried to go back and build something that's, you know, functional but with some beauty as well. So the brass coupler up there and the propeller blades which we cast because buying these things is expensive so you know you get to learn a lot as you go along she has a fishtail rudder on her that'll hopefully give us a little bit better turning radius than a barn door rudder would so we've improved upon what the chinese were doing and this the skeg fin is actually our radiator too the engine cool that comes back there's 100 gallons of it in there and it's pumped forward to keep the engine cool engine rooms just forward of this and there's where the exhaust comes out and runs down the side and there's Lalani that dragon was made by Lalani and she's working on uh, some more dragons for us so we're gonna have signal guns that look like dragons the davits are now back on we've actually tested that and they lift the tender beautifully you know when I started working on boats I was a little terrified of being off the ground on tall ladders but I've gotten used to it so our gangway is really nothing more than a ladder here and here we are aboard our deck crane is now mounted in place and the cargo hold hatch is open for us this morning this is the companion way that goes down into the cargo hold and the cargo hatch is uh, also where we put our dinghy on these bunks here and this is where researchers will store their equipment they can drop it in there pull it out with the deck crane put it over the side do whatever work it needs bring it back in and this floor actually can take water down there it has big bilge pumps in each of the corners right now we're storing a little sail equipment in there and this is Matthew he's helped us out with our lithium iron phosphate batteries we live off donations and love that and this the companion way to the forward cabin that's where crew will be crane will be a workhorse for us lifting experiments and projects out of the cargo hole and putting them over the side into the water and I'm really happy with our dragons of course we built them early on and I've loved having them up here on the boat and I'd love the mixture of you know technology and art together And the pilot house, this will be where crew gathers for meals and entertainment to plan out the next day's work. Defreezer and food storage, countertops for cooking, sink, convection oven, induction cooktop, seating area around the table with lots more storage behind that. And the most beautiful thing in here is the Octoquist steering wheel. That is gorgeous. You know, the wood here on this was made by a friend of mine, Hugh Hood. And it's uh, sad that he passed on, but it's, I just love having something to remember him by and the other crew members that have been on this boat. This is also where we'll do the sailing from. So the lines will come in from the sails forward and some of them come in uh, through the side here and it all comes in through pulleys or sheaves and goes down through sheet clutches and we can control them one at a time with that big harken and winch there. And when I get too old to use it as a crank, it's got a part that we can put a hydraulic motor onto it. Moving back to the aft deck, you actually cross over the emergency escape hatch from the cabin below, and that is acrylic you're seeing through to the bed down below there. Out here on the aft deck are two davits. They reach out and they hold up our tender and a winch system that can lift that tender up using an elevator motor and geared box from uh, somebody's house. The dragons up front have pipes inside of them too that collect rainwater from the roof. 
we do it back here as well and it all goes forward and into storage tanks in the front of the boat. Another feature of the pilot house, we have a porthole that looks down into the engine room below. So we drop down to the forward cabin. There are four bunks in here for crew and researchers. Shower and head, all done up in fiberglass. So you can just throw water where you want. A DC panel, pardon the dual exit signs, we're trying to make the Coast Guard happy here. And a water collection system for rainwater. That will probably eventually turn into a dry locker, so when you come to that companionway, you have some place to put your wet things. These are Wiley ports. They work really nice. See, they have wedges in them, so they can be wedged, closed, or open. And I imagine we'll get some mosquito screen over those at some point, so that won't be an issue for us. The watertight doors are one of the first things that we made because they're just expensive if you have to buy them even off an auction. We enter the cargo hold area and our main cargo hatch is partly open there. You can see where it'd be easy to bring equipment in. Set it on this floor. This is the deck that water will pass through. There are pumps in each of the four corners of this deck. We've got our portholes of an auction that you're in a bar in Boston after they were taken out of ships and we cast our own deadlights for them out of aluminum. This is darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. The rest of the quote by Martin Luther King is hatred cannot drive out hatred. Only love can do that. Each of them has something unique cast into them. This one is I have no fear of great depths. Only great fear of shallow living. And all of our deck tiles down here have quotes carved into them. This one is, the miracle is this. The more we share, the more we have. Live long and prosper. Leonard Nemo. And the frames here coming down the wall pass into the keels. And down below us are the twin keels, fuel tanks, battery storage tanks, and water tanks. The main mast comes right down through there. And back into the engine room. It's got another watertight bulkhead and door. Tool storage, a raised floor again so we can access the plumbing and hydraulics below. All of the uh, pad eyes that we need to clip in and move heavy equipment because there's the main engine there and there'll be a generator on top of it and another generator on top where this red board is. We're just loaded light right now so we can be lifted into the water without adding any additional weight. All the fuel system for polishing and uh, filtering the fuel. The DC system, water maker over here, CNC router, plasma table, 3D printer. Our big uh, mill will go there. It's a CNC mill and lathe. Small welding table, electric panel, control panel for the scuba compressor. Another watertight door going into the aft cabin. A sink. Eventually a countertop that will be built in above the two engines here once they're permanently installed. The fuel manifold so we can direct fuel into any of the six fuel tanks out underneath the cargo hold floor. And the fuel intake box and the day tank which is where fuel is recycled through the engines uh, during the day and that has a side glass on it so you can actually see the level of fuel. And this big tank beside here is a hydraulic accumulator so that it makes it easier for the pumps to not have to cycle on and off so much. Overhead cable trays and a chain and cable system coming down from the pilot house above. That comes down as a shaft onto the sprockets, drives these cables. Cables turn into uh, pipes that run across the ceiling here back to the rudder quadrant and there will be hydraulic cylinders back here we're currently using them for lifting and lowering the boat so all the hydraulic hoses are pulled off while we use our hydraulic rams that steer the boat for something else but the manual system is the primary way that we'll steer this boat Okay, that's it. Edited the video that you'll see tonight if you don't want to go up the campaign your way onto the boat. 
Hope you enjoy the tour. Thank you.